Welcome back on the program. Good morning, Abuja. And yes, we are going into a conversation that I know you'll find interesting because this is coming from a human angle perspective. We're talking about uh, caring for the traumatized child in our society. And this is very, very important because, you know, out here in our society, we have so many children who are victims of evil acts, acts of wickedness, acts of negligence, acts of pure immoral deprivation of some people. Now, who gets to pick up this broken child, nurse him, bring him back to the society to become a productive person? These are the questions that we beg, beg, beg to be answered. Well, some people have dedicated themselves to caring for such children, and they are the people that we celebrate today. One of them has joined us here in the studio, and I want to say uh, I'm very pleased to introduce Irwe Mitrol Awe Roswagene, who is uh, uh, the CEO or founder for Hope for the Label Child Initiative. Welcome on the show this morning. Thank you so much. Yes. Good to have you so join us on the show. It's such a great pleasure, and I yes. find this a great privilege. I do not take this for granted. Yes. Well, we feel we are partners are pursuing the same goal because we are talking about children who have been traumatized, mm. children who carry a label bigger than their capacity, children who have been exposed to things that only God can help. Yeah. But then, as we say, God does not come down from heaven, yeah. so he sends down his angels yeah, uh, through people true. like yourself. Very true. So let's talk about the traumatized child. Who can we say carry this label? Okay, so uh, I really want to draw our attention to the point that uh, these traumatized children, they later grow to become adults. Yes. So even most of the adults around us, they have a, a traumatized child in them. Hmm. So you see some persons acting out of character, and you like wonder, is it really is it really difficult to do this? This should be common sense. But none of us take to record that this adult has a traumatized child in him or her. Hmm. So they come up with like uh, characters that we cannot understand. This all could be traced back to a horrible childhood. So I would say a traumatized child is a child that is not properly guarded emotionally and psychologically. Okay. A child that is not being related to individually. We know we have a mindset about children and we have a definition. And at this point, we throw the point that there's something called individuality. You bring the standard and you lay it on all the kids not considering their ability and their uniqueness. It's just like getting a snake and a, a, um, a fish to come on the floor and have a race. Why don't we drop the fish in the river and let the snake go on the, on the, the land? You get what I'm trying to say? Yes. They're both great. They're unique. Let them be on their own uh, uh, sphere and support them just the way they are. Yeah, so that's what I'll have to say about okay, that. Okay, thank you so much, Mitro. When you were responding, I could see the passion to which you were trying to mm. respond to how you were caring for these traumatized children. And what to ask, how did you go into bringing all these children together? Do you have a story behind it? Oh, yeah. Okay. I had a very horrible childhood. A childhood that even if the Nollywood should act it, you're going to say, where did they come from with this storyline? So maybe I should guide the storyline. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I lost this finger to the experience. And this is one of the least of the things I went through as a child. Mm -hmm. I got to a point where I had no self-esteem. Everything was gone. I was so dull in school. And this was um, triggered from what I was going through at home. Now, I'm talking about advocate for the children because we're still taking it to the society, to the school. Now, a child could be going through stuff at home. 
That's where it's supposed to get support. But at least when the child gets to school, I wish there was a teacher who is like enlightened to help this child in school. Now, when I was a child, like I said, I had a horrible childhood. I was so dull because of how uh, they treated me, lost self-esteem. I couldn't even assimilate whatever I was being taught. Now, no one could even relate. No one was coming to my aid. Instead, I was being punished more. We still hear it in school today. Children might fail an assignment, and a teacher will be bullying the child. Listen, you taught me something. I didn't understand it. And you're bullying me for something you didn't do right. Does that make sense at all? So this is where I'm trying to pull the community and the society, pull their attention to it. Something is going wrong. So this a child that is sent to the school, like I was, you should be able to observe. When you go to the studies, you see there's so many materials that have been given to teachers to understand the behavior and the character of a child, learning disability and all of that. So getting to understand this, we help this child. I went through things at home and also came to school. I was going through things again. I went to the society, maybe I go to the playground. Same thing. Same thing. So there's no help anywhere. And uh, all of a sudden, when I start exhibiting new character, then I'm being labeled. You can imagine, maybe I was beaten at home nestlessly and I get to school and I'm not being active in class. Instead of the teacher to come around and say, oh, what's the problem? Shall we do this? Instead, the teacher is going to say, I am dull. I do it. Wow. Uh, yes. So this is where I'm coming from. So it's coming from a place of a personal experience. So I, I, other people might be coming from the place of research, but I'm coming with a whole lot of personal experience. I hope you understand what yes, I'm trying to explain here. Yeah. We do, we do. And this is really, really, as you were uh, speaking and talking about what you had to go through, I could only imagine in my head uh, what this experience could be, especially when we look around our society and we say we're in the 21st century yeah. and yet these things are still prevalent every day we get to hear stories of an abused child either as, as a help or as a, 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 a cousin nephew mm -hmm. niece staying with a different family or some even directly to their own children just like uh, yes. mine I was with my mom and, and my siblings that so, was where I was going through all of this torture so so you can you can imagine that we are in this generation and this is happening now the work you do it's very important because you are coming from a place where you have to experience this mm. and now you are out here trying to be the this, the, the, the change agent yeah. that uh, balances things that, okay, no matter what you are going through, there's someone to talk to yeah. so that we could get you back on track. Yeah. Now, related with us what your experiences with the children you've had to encounter has been like. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm going to say some of the children, we have to go extra length to make them know that what you're going through is actually a trauma. But lately, we saved a little girl who is uh, she's nine years old, and um, her stepfather has been sleeping with her. Oh, yeah. So she told her mother, and her mother was beating her not to tell anyone. Do not say that to anyone. Yes. That's so so now I just want to add again. Even most of the, the people who are like leashing this abuse on the children, they actually don't know they are doing such. They're doing it from a foolish place, not necessarily from a wicked place. And this is where we come in to educate the public. This is one of the things that make Hope for the Label Child stand out from other uh, NGO. We educate the Probably create awareness, create the dangers around it. Yeah, so this really help us and bring the the work we do on the children a little bit unique and different. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, I, I, there's so much. There's so much uh, around this discussion that there's so much to discuss on this uh, on on uh, caring for the traumatized child. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, we are running out of time. Yeah. But very quickly, I would like you to just. Uh, through us pointers now, 
Now, what should we look for? And when we do look for those things, what should we do, especially as regards, say, maybe I'm a passerby and yeah. I do see a traumatized child, what should I do? I really want to thank you for this question because I've really been praying you asked me this question. One of the major things you should look out for, once you see a child behaving in a weird, any form of weird manner, no matter how it is, do not ever label it. The first thing you should do, uh, uh, approach this child in a loving manner, no matter how horrible or nasty that child is behaving. Make sure that first of all, you have to validate that child's feeling. No matter how weird the feeling is, you have to validate the child's feeling. Now, validating is not accepting. Validating the child's feeling is like, yes, I see you feel this way. Okay, can we talk about it? And let the child speak. That, that is the only time that you can trace where this is coming from. So when you see a child that is extremely quiet or extremely, uh, no, let's say hyperactive, mm -hmm. that is a signal. When the child is extremely quiet, that means the child have gone through a lot yes. and the child is now numb. And it's like saying, what can the light throw more? What next? What next can come? Now, when you see the child that is hyperactive, the child is trying to protect himself by himself because he has given up on all of the adults around. So I, I fell into the category of hyperactive. So when my teacher speaks to me in class, I'm, trust me, this was when I was like 13, 14, you dare not tell me to sit down, even though I have to sit down. Once you say that, I remember everything that, is going, that I'm going through at home. I, I say it as an attack. Then I, I, I would say, what do you mean I should sit down? Then the teacher would say, oh, what, what, what sort of child is this? Unless I sit down. The teacher doesn't take you to the next level to say, oh, something is behind this. Yeah, so I think this is two major ones. Just because of time, I'm going to leave this uh, for us now. But I'm sure we have more. And when we have more time or more chance, I can throw more light to it. Thank you so much yeah. for your time with us this morning. That is a great job you are doing. Thank you so out there, much. Caring thank you. for the traumatized children. Thank you, so much. Thank, you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. we've been talking about caring for a traumatized children, and our guest this morning has talked to us passionately about it. We could all see the, the passion to which he talked to us about how it is a re it's all our collective responsibility to care for any child that is traumatized, any child that is withdrawn, any child that is hyperactive, it is your responsibility and it is also my responsibility to take note and care for them. Yes, we've been talking with me through our yes, so yes, I'm not right. 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 thank you so much. Thank you you've for done so well. what you're doing and thank you again for coming on the Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Yes. Such a privilege. Yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, the program is Good Morning Abuja. We're going to go on this quick break. When we come back, we have a lot for you, like I say. Don't go anywhere.